Okay, so uh, this flight, American Airlines Flight 587, the crew taxied the plane to runway 31 left and it was behind a Japan Airlines Boeing 747. Uh, the Japan Airlines flight was cleared for takeoff at 9.11 a.m. And about 30 seconds later, the tower cautioned Flight 587 about potential wake turbulence from that 747. At 9.13, Flight 587 was cleared for takeoff and left the runway uh, about a minute later. Total, it was about a minute and 40 seconds after the 747, you know, Flight 587 climbed to 500 feet and began a left turn climb to a heading of 220 degrees. So they're on their ascent, you know, they're climbing after takeoff. Yeah. So the takeoff was fine. Yeah. yeah. So far, everything's smooth. They're still not done. You know, they're still climbing through lower altitudes. They're not at cruising altitude yet. So at 915 uh, and 36 seconds, Flight 587 entered the wake turbulence from that Japan Airlines 747. And uh, in response to this, First Officer Molin alternated the rudder back and forth from the right to left in quick successions, causing a side slip. Remember what a side slip is? It's when one wing of the plane is lowered and the opposite rudder is applied to keep the plane pointed forward. It's like something they do in crosswind landings. So this quick rocking back and forth on the rudder from left to right in quick succession created some incredible lateral forces on the vertical stabilizer, which caused the lugs that hold it down to fail. Uh -huh. The vertical stabilizer separated from the aircraft. It just fell off? Yeah, it just fell off. Because they did a, a maneuver? Just, right, he, uh, but that was a normal maneuver, right? The maneuver's normal, but he kept alternating left to right very quickly from extreme left to extreme right on the rudder. Oh, so the, the stabilizer separates from the plane, falls into Jamaica Bay, and the plane pitches downwards and goes into a flat spin. In a flat spin, the plane is nearly level and it's spinning like a frisbee, you know, around its yaw axis. What? Yeah, imagine the plane's level and flat, but it's spinning around, yeah, like I said, like a frisbee or a boomerang. Whoa, I, I didn't know planes could do that. They're not supposed to do that. <laughs> it's really a terrible situation to be in. The aerodynamic forces caused by this spin actually ripped the two engines away from the airplane and uh, they, they landed on the ground. One of them caused some damage to a gas station. It ripped off the engines? Yeah, the engines flew off. So they were spinning pretty quickly. Yes, this is like, like I said, yeah, this is bad. And you know, it's, it's even worse because their engines are ripped off. You know, one of them hits a gas station. The other one hits a house and a boat. So the loss of engines actually cut off the power to the flight data recorder at 9.16.01 a.m. The cockpit voice recorder had backup power. And on it, you can hear the stall warning sounding at 9.16.04. And three seconds later, Molin says, what the hell are we into? We're stuck in it. States replies, get out of it, get out of it. And those are the last recorded words, because a few seconds later, the plane crashes into the ground in a neighborhood at Newport Avenue and Beach 131st Street uh, in Rockaway Park, New York. It's southwest of JFK Airport. So we talked about wake turbulence. I'm going to talk a little more about that. So every plane generates wake turbulence from the moment they take off to the moment they land as a byproduct of like the lift from the wings. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the plane, the bigger and more powerful the wake left behind is, and it can be dangerous. So wake flows behind and below the aircraft and creates vortices. And these vortex of wake flows, it goes outward and upward around the wingtips. So Normally, the common way that pilots will avoid wake is to fly above the flight path of the aircraft in front of you since the wake is below the wings. They'll take off at a point on the runway before the plane in front of you does and land at a point on the runway after the plane in front of you does. Okay. The NTSB found that the enormous stress on the vertical stabilizer was not caused by the wake from the Japan Airlines flight, but instead was caused by the first officer's unnecessary and excessive rudder inputs. The NTSB further stated that if the first officer had just stopped making additional inputs, the aircraft would have stabilized. They did a performance study that showed the loads caused by the first officer's actions produced 203,000 pounds of force on the rudder. And the rudder was designed to accept up to 100,000 pounds of force. Oh, so this, dang. This, he could have broken two, over two of them. Right. This is over double the amount of force the rudder was designed to take. If you enjoyed that episode, that was just a small snippet from one of our episodes of Black Box Down. You can click the link down below me to see all of them, experience them for them for yourselves. Uh, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you can keep up to date anytime there's a new Black Box Down episode out. Animated or not.